Kishime, one of those guys who just sort of under that bubble, there's a bunch of guys sort of, you know, at the heels of Takato. This this uh, competition is a good chance for him to uh, get a whole bunch of points with Takato not there. Shansky just launched himself there, taking Shishime with him. And it was the Israeli who ended up on his back with Shishime in control. Yazari the lead then. Plenty of time on the clock. White picks up a penalty. Yeah, just hiding his sleeve and using the leg to just break the grip up. Oh, and he... The, the attacks are coming in from the Israeli, but unfortunately, he's uh, leaving the door open for, for blue. The Japanese... And he's going to be open, tying isn't he? this up. Let's see what's going to happen here. That leg's pretty deep. And they're going to call Mate. Shimei's got to get a little more busy if he wants to convert that. He was just sort of a little bit lackadaisical. Tied up the shoulder, but not much else. Shansky still trying to. Get something going here. Down by Wazadi early. Picked up another, another penalty, this time for a gripping infringement. Had control of the sleeve, just push that down, didn't do anything with it. There's no problem with getting a dominant grip if you then do something with it. The doing something has got to be positive. So you, you take a dominant grip and you use it to launch in an attack. What you can't do is to take a dominant grip, hold it there, and then there's negative, there's nothing yeah, it's static. happening. Yeah. So it needed to do something positive. He couldn't come up with a positive action, so he picked up penalty two and a half minutes left to go couple unforced errors basically yeah Actually, this place is pretty quiet yeah there's still plenty of people in here the, the difficulty obviously is that um, as, as you've said before if they're not the the stars and they're not they're not attached to you know one of the big the big teams they haven't got the kind of following that has that incessant cheering that goes along with someone from Komatsu or something it's more so the women you know they when the women's teams are out there it's just non-stop yeah there. well it's interesting because I don't believe that the men's teams, the men really have those kind of support groups. It's all the women's teams. Just an interesting phenomenon. I think men's judo in Japan, it develops around the universities and very tight. For women, it's a little bit looser at the university level, but then once they graduate, these the corporate teams bring them in, and then it's a Go really, wild. really tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, you could argue that this is the reason why I think the Japanese women are more successful than the men in many ways. They have a better uh, system for what to do with them after they graduate from university. Yeah, that's uh, a, a real point for discussion. What is the difference? You know, what happens with training? What happens with all sorts of things? And if it is, th th there's this this other um, kind of support network, and well maybe that is. Well, I mean, the the other issue is, oh, there was a good attack there. Um, you know, all athletes have to consider their career after their athletic retirement. And a lot of them will get stuck. You know, they, they didn't prepare for it, and all of a sudden they're, they're done. With the corporate ones, yeah, you could 
you could work for Mickey House or something like that. They'll they'll take care of you. And uh, maybe the women are a bit more aware of that than the men are. For the men, if you're a top guy, if you win an Olympic or world title, you got to shot one of the university coaching positions. Otherwise, your prospects are pretty limited. Jimmy picks up the third penalty as well. He hasn't really been been bothered about the getting the yellow card here or there because he's got the big score on the board. Well, three, you might get a little worried. <laughs> Not going to give it up now. <laughs> 